Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're featuring a brand new model from the company Ball. This is their outlier and it's part of the engineer free range of watches and personally I think they're onto an absolute winner with this watch. I was lucky enough to get to see it and speak to the guys at Ball um, over at Watch Pro last weekend in, England, in London and wow I thought this is a real standout model to be fair. It's got so many cool features and it's a true, well, what people call a true GMT, which I'll demonstrate in a minute when compared to the Zin with the ETA movement in there. Now, but before I get too far into the review, I've got to say a massive thank you to Ryan and the team over at Francis and Gay of Coventry for allowing me to review this watch. They've got so many watches, guys. Honestly, if you're in the Midlands area, it'd be rude not to pop in. If you're further afield, check out um, the description below as I'll leave a link to their website there. So anyway, let's talk sizes first. Um, it's got a few quirks when it comes to the sizes. The case size is 40 mil, but the bezel size is actually 41 and a half mil. Now the thickness, again, I think we'll put it down at 13.8. I actually measure it 13.4. And if you take into account the Cyclops on there, it goes up an extra millimeter. So it goes up to 14.4 and the lug width is a very nice 46.5. Bracelet size is 20 millimeters. Now, the dial. I think it's really a clean, stylish looking watch. You can also get this watch in black, but I think the white just looks superb. I think very clean and classy about that dial. Now, as you can see, we've got the trademark of ball really, which is their tritium tubes. Now, I think they've done it quite tidy and kind of have done it a lot more cleaner than they do on some of their other watches. In fact, there is 29 tubes in this watch. I would hate to put a Geiger counter next to this one because obviously they are slightly radioactive but what that means is these glow all the time and to be fair it is superb. Even the bezel glows and it has a differentiation, a differential kind of darker view for nighttime versus the daytime view there and I think that is just a stroke of genius. One of the other things I really do like on this watch um, so many GMT models never have the GMT hand lit up and I think that's a real shame but Ball do that so absolute hats off to them for doing that. I think it's you know, it's about time if you get a GMT watch you actually want to see the second time zone potentially in low, le low light conditions and they actually do this. Now talking about their hands they are incredibly well polished and I like the fact you've got these little see-through tips there. What that helps is as that passes the date window with the Cyclops you can still see the date and the GMT hand is quite a weird affair there but it works all ever so well and obviously you have a trademark railway um, logo on the back end of the second hand acting as a counterweight for it and I do think that's quite a nice touch. Um, we do have a fair bit of writing on here, 1000 one gals. Um, so, and the 200 meters water resistant, and most importantly, a chronometer spec movement, which we'll talk about more in a minute. So, this is quite a cool, honestly, I think it's quite cool. Look at the way they sculpted out the uh, reholt there, going around our chapter ring, and they've got little tiny tubes up there as well. There is so much going on in this style, but somehow it doesn't feel cluttered and that is quite a, a cool thing to say. I like the fact you've got the orange on the GMT hand, the little orange segment up there and the pip at the top it being orange there. So overall, I think they've done a full on really nice job of this watch. Um, as we come past that, obviously we have this lovely sapphire crystal. We do have a Cyclops 50-50. Some people like them, some people don't, but that's the way it is. But you can see we've got this nice boxed raised up section here and that looks superb. Now the bezel, you might think is actually fixed being a GMT, but it isn't. So you can actually rotate it. And what this does, which I think is superb, you get half increments. Because so many people I've heard um, complain that GMT watches do not account for the 0.5 time zone. So in between, and this one actually does, even the Rolex GMT Master 2 
doesn't do this and I think that's really cool. What this basically means is you can run free time zones on this and that is fantastic. Let me demonstrate how the actual GMT function works and why they call this a true GMT. So at the moment we have got standard time on it so this would be home time possibly, your local time would be 5 to 2. So yeah nothing no problem there but when you read in a second time zone you can read it here so this would be five so use a minute hand as normal five to ten in the morning so let's say you were flying somewhere and the place you're flying to is two hours ahead now the beauty with this if i pull it out to the first click i can independently set that hour hand so you can see there i can move it two hours no problem at all and that's what makes this watch really really good if i was to demonstrate on a eta based module this one being the 2892 or in newer models it's the i think it's the s double 300 let me move this out of way first so you can see the gmt hand there now let's say we move forward two hours there if i go and pull this crown out or you know you cannot move it you have to move where is it there we go. You can only move the GMT hand. If I want to move the hour hand to local time, then it hacks and it stops the second hand, which ideally isn't what you want. So that's where this is superior, but you can actually independently do that. Now, if you wanted to set the time on this, some people might say, well, how do you do that? And then if you want to set it to, I don't know, uh, let's say, I don't know, 440, what you do first is move the minute hand to 40, push it in, and then you move the hour hand independent. Now to change the date, you do have to scroll the hour hand all the way around. So as you can see there, so it should change over to 11, there you go. So that's how you actually do it. If you wanna set the date, you do actually have to go round like that. But it's a really, I think this one is spot on. And I say this, bezel with the half increments also allows you to um, set for independent ones so you just simply line that up with however how many hours if you've got somewhere two hours ahead you'd move that two hours ahead and you'd read the time using the bezel really nice now as we come past that i'm gonna save the action absolutely flawless honestly that feels better than the rolex gmt master 2 i think personally now when it comes to the body of the watch um, all polished sides, as you can see, we do have nice big chunky crown guards on the um, crown there. The crown is a screw, out, uh, screw down crown, so that's always good. That's locked in there. And the back of the watch, you do have the logo on there with the different um, time zones printed on there as well, which makes, for, uh, makes it a tad easier if you want to know roughly how far ahead somewhere is. So you can do that off the back of the watch. And one thing I must say, it's very smooth. It doesn't feel harsh in any way, shape or form. Now the bracelet, oh, one thing I should say, the movement behind it is the RM7337C. Now I, you know, I put this on the time grapher and as it says, it's a chronometer spec movement. It was flawless. I think it was running plus two seconds. One thing I must also say about this watch, it is a limited edition of only one thousand now other bits of tech on this watch you've got an incredible um high shock resistancy to this they say it can take up to 5g of shock which is very very impressive so you've got a, a watch with 200 meters water resistance and you've got you know, uh, high levels of um, magnetic field resistance with the uh, 1000 Gauss on there. And one, you know, 200 meters of water resistance. That is pretty superb. It makes for a very compelling buy, this watch. Now the bracelet, the bracelet's okay. Um, I don't know, it, it doesn't, It somehow, I don't think it matches the rest of the watch. It feels a little bit, I don't know, it's just, the watch is fantastic. A bracelet, I feel, could be a little bit better. We do have a butterfly system on there. Now, as you can see here, we do have half links. So that enables you to hopefully get the fit you would so desire. They are screws, so it makes it pretty simple to change out yourself. And you do have a logo on there. Let me put it on my wrist so you've got an idea how it actually looks. 
quick wrist check. I'm wearing a Picine on the new Artemel um, hybrid straps and they are gorgeous, I have to say. Um, Mr. Bob, what are you wearing? The Panzera. Now, the Panzera, I think, is a very cool watch and that is in for review. So we're going to get back and we're going to see more of that soon. So my wrist size is seven and a quarter inches. Now, to be fair, I haven't sized this watch in any way, shape or form. But there you go on my wrist. And I think it looks good. It does hunker down due to the um, slightly they slightly curved lugs on there. But it does seem to sit quite nice and level, you know, low down on the wrist. So that's no problem at all. But I think it's a really, really handsome looking watch on there. They've done a real good job on this one. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And most importantly, stay safe out there. Bye.